part of our heritage day in Salt Mills um, to um, give a talk about Port Larrigan, the, the ship behind us here. So I'll just, with no further, without further ado, Sean is going to give us a few words about Port Larrigan and perhaps talk about the buildings in Salt Mills as well, a little bit of local history. Thanks very much, Sean. Thank you, Michael. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're all very welcome here. Uh, just a few words about the Port Larriga. It was uh, built in 1907 and it commenced its working life in 1908, dredging Waterford Harbour. It had a displacement of around 400 tonnes and it carried 500 tonnes of mud. There was a crew of seven on it. The captain, engineer, stoker, two crane drivers and some deckhands. Uh, it was built in the Liffey Dockyards in Dublin, which was a great achievement at the time, but considering the Titanic was built, the Titanic was commenced building at the same time as the Port Lorry was finished, and that had a displacement of 55,000 tonnes compared to the 400 tonnes of the Port Lorry. Shipbuilding in Ireland at that time was, was massive. So the Port Lorry's piece of history being that it was built before the Titanic. It's powered by steam. It has a twin engine in it, a compound engine, up and down. The high pers pressure piston is uh, 16 inches in diameter and the low pressure is three foot in diameter. Quite a big piston. It did about 60 to 100 revs at a speed of six or seven knots an hour. Coal fired, like, you know, and uh, that's as nearly as much as I can say about the Port Lariga that I know of. Uh, it, was, it worked for 75 years in Waterford. I bought it sometime in the 80s and I brought it here under its own steam and uh, with the intentions of doing something with it but never got round to doing anything with it. At the present time, I think the Harbour Board and Waterford have some interest in it again taking it back to do something with it. Other than that, I don't know much more about it. And uh, Years ago, my Kyo was telling me there was 13 ships in the harbour here waiting, tied up waiting for fine weather to get out. 13. They were bringing in a capacity of 60 to 100 tonnes of coal. And on one occasion, they discharged a load of coal there, I think it was 80 tonnes or something at the quay and when the men that were down in the hole the skip winched up and pulled in and then tipped over into a horse's cart and brought in further on the quay and it was weighed and sold but when the men came up in the evening from the after cleaning up the hold of the ship there wasn't an ounce of coal left in the coal yard it was all weighed and sold that was a great achievement but there would be Mike Yo was telling me there'd be horses and cats from the end of the road here over to the quay and to be equal at the far side at that stage, you know. And uh, before World War II, Mike Roach was telling me there's 34 gravel boats working in here in the harbour. They'd be drawn from, taking from two to six tonnes of gravel. And they'd be going every day drawn in gravel in the fine weather. Mike made his money. They'd be, they had to load the schooners with ballast when they discharged the coal and Mike got a half crown a day filling the ballast and he bought a new bicycle and he went up to Waterford to join a ship so he joined a ship in Waterford they were loaded with potatoes and somewhere out off the salt east she sank and he lost his new bike <laughs> so that's as much as I would know about the place. About the... Where did the coal come from? What port did it come from? Wales. Somewhere in Wales. Yeah, camp in Wales, yeah. And was that direct from Wales or was it loaded into lighter ships to come in here? Oh, direct. Direct. To be only bringing in 60 to 80 tonne schooners, you know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Cowman had uh, seven ships himself. He had seven daughters. And he had a ship named after each daughter. That was before the, before the war. Up to 1939, it was very active there, you know.
impacted on the coal coming direct in. Oh yeah, yeah. All the bricks now for the the viaduct over here, the railway. They all came into the to the quay here in St. Cairns. And they were drawn by steam engine from there up. Yeah. My grandfather was driving one of the engines. And when the when the hole they come on the road they just got down and they put the bricks in the hole. <laughs> There's a lot of bricks in that road. <laughs> Practical solution. Jack Hellfire. Hellfire Jack, yeah. Hellfire Jack. Yeah. 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 As regards the building in Salt Mills, Martin Murphy's great grandfather would have Martin would have yes, built it. That's right. Mr. Kelly. Johnny Kelly, yeah. It was built as a stables and grain store and I suppose it's hay and horses all that. for the, the carts, the horses for the carts and the... Yeah, yeah you say a bit about it, Martin, you know a bit about it. Ah, well, I mean, yeah, I, I can, but it might be better to tell the story. Well, the, Johnny Kelly came <coughs> and his brother came from Kiltegan in the county Wicklow as uh, bakers down to Tintern. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, obviously, when he saw an opportunity as they moved up to the new village uh, to get involved and uh, they established uh, the bakery, <coughs> And uh, obviously when they established the bakery, they had to um, <coughs> have uh, grain, and so they needed a grain store. So overhead was the grain store. I don't know the date it was burned down. You might uh, maybe know that. I don't know. No. Uh, that, uh, but <coughs> all underneath was uh, all lovely arched entrances to the stables and to the various units for the housing of, of all the cars. I presume a lot of those cars would have been covered in because when you're transporting bread uh, from around the area, and generally, like I suppose, it was probably within 10 miles of here. Because <clears throat> I remember one time, Richie Evans telling me the, sto <laughs> the story one time, that Balikalan, as you will all know, uh, was the centre, uh, if you wanted to go to a hardware, uh, the railway station, the pub, the various shops. If you're coming from the hook or that direction, Balkalan was the place you went to. But one of the fortunes of Slade uh, was coming back uh, through Salt Mills on the way back to the hook and he called into Richie Evans's. And uh, all the fresh bread had been coming across, had been brought across from the bakery. And uh, you could get the lovely smell of the fresh bacon and all. And Churchill said to, to Richie, he said, Give us one of them, by because again, again, them gets to the hook, they're always stale. <laughs> 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 but uh, the building itself had its use for uh, whatever years it was occupied. And uh, obviously, and there was a well, a deep well up at the top. Sean can maybe tell you uh, the link uh, with the troubled times and, and the well. But for practical purposes, uh, that's what a bakery required. The grain store on top and a housing for the animals and uh, everything to do with transport down at, uh, under, underneath. And, <coughs> and uh, I suppose uh, when it went on fire then, uh, that was obviously uh, the end. The fire started up top in the grain store and that was the end of it. Bill Anglem, a man living up the road. Uh, there were no houses between the building, building and Bill Anglem's old cottage up there. And Bill heard the screaming of the horses and then saw the flames. At woken him up, he raced down and freed the horses. Only for that, all the horses would have been burned. But uh, the bakery, I suppose, the most of the bacon was done probably down in the lower end of Salt Mills, opposite Leskis and the Yeah, right. And well, the place just in at the back. Where Laffins is now. Where, where Laffins is now, what we call Brains Square. And they probably had more buildings as you went up than in behind the bigger house after they bought that. But that's the gist of the story anyway, and that's why the building is there. And there's probably more to it with dates and all the rest of it, but that's the gist of it. Hey, thank you, Martin. So if you want to go into it, to tell them about the what was buried in the well not. <laughs> oh yes, well as you, as you know we had an explosion over here in the troubled times and five people killed but the, at the time of the explosion my father was on his way, he was walking at Bassett's and he was putting pipes in the, new pipes in the steam engine and he was taking some of the pipes over 
they were using the pipe to make the bombs. And he was just just after around William Kelly's there when the explosion went up. So he didn't know what to do with the pipe, so he had a brainwave anyway, and he dumped them in the well at, uh, in the new building. And they were there for years, but uh, a granduncle of Martin's was a priest, Father Kelly. He came home from America, I think, and for, for something better to do, he said he'd clean up the well, and he discovered the pipes in it, so that, that became a mystery how they ever got there. <laughs> no one knew for years. <laughs> so that was the story of the... The well served its purpose in the time, yep. Yeah. The last of the Kellys was Eddie, Ned Kelly and Ned lived on there, I think until about 1957, I have the date at home. And uh, when he died, and that was the end of the Kellys. After uh, the explosion here, he was involved in the explosion, and a lot of, uh, most of the people in the explosion never procreated afterwards. Um, uh, they suffered badly from shell shock and that type of thing, and they more or less went into themselves and lived a quiet life uh, after that. And he was one of those, lived a quiet life until he died, I think about 1957. I have the details at home. I remember him well, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> So I suppose that's about it, we can conclude. Unless, unless you want to tell him, Sean, anything about the activity out here when you used the Port Lorry for practical purposes, for gravel or sand or... Oh, no, I never used it for... For anything, you never got that far? No, no. Okay. no. Why did it all change? What stopped? Why did all the boats stop coming in? The trade or something else? The, which boats now are you talking about? The, the, the coal. And the coal. All the well, they were outdated, like, you know, steam took over then. They were, they were uh, schooners. A 500 ton ship did come in with, uh, that was the last load that came in, was 500 ton of coal hmm. by steam. And then the war broke out and coal couldn't be got through. Right. That finished it. That was the end of it. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And I suppose it's like everything, I don't know what the draft out there is, but uh, uh, as the years went on, all the ships got bigger. I mean, that's what happened in the port of New Ross. Port of New Ross is 16 miles inland <coughs> and it was the biggest port in Ireland uh, way back in, in the day in Marshall's time and uh, then because it was 16 miles inland as all the vessels got bigger eventually they couldn't uh, travel up the river so the port kind of died down and I'm sure there's probably a little of that here as well. Yeah. You know, uh, do you know what I mean? It depends on uh, the, Silton, yeah. the depth, yeah. But you would get in <coughs> a thousand ton ship in there all right, you okay. know. But, uh, is it, was, there was no finish, before you finish on, just tell them about um, uh, Mac Leeson and then run it to, to the, the corner of the hill. Oh yeah, <laughs> the, the, the flower used to come <coughs> before the rail, the flower used to come by horse and car, you know. And at the bridge of Sart Mills, three or four blokes would have a bit, they'd be in 20 stone bags. To put the 20 stone bag on their shoulder and run up the hill with heading up the ladder. And Matt Deason, he was a small built man. Well, you remember Martin? All the Deason's as well, I do. Yeah. I do. The but Martin usually won, or Matt usually won the, yeah. the contest. 20 stone of flour on his back. Wow. Yeah. That was a good challenge going up that hill with 20 stone on your back. It was, and then go, and then go up a ladder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. When, <laughs> when men were men. Health and safety wouldn't allow now. Uh, we need to get back to that. Yeah. <laughs> but there's some shipwrecks out there, Sean. Did you tell me before that some, some boat went down out there with reasonable cargo in it? Was it granite or was there something else? No, the only one that I know of was my roaches and the spuds. Uh, no. but there, were all the, there were all the wrecks were there. I remember a lot of the wrecks of all the schooners. You know, they were around the quay there and up at the far side of the quay. But they, they didn't any of them ever go down, like, you know, that was just left there. The Ocean Pearl, that was there, but that was, hmm? uh, the Ocean Pearl was just ran in and left there. Yeah. It didn't sink, like. Someone in Kilmore or something owned that, I think. Yeah. Was it two brothers? I don't know, there was some yeah. story about that, wasn't there? Yeah, but it was there behind the borough for... It was there for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Sean, do you know anything about a, a graveyard? Over by St. Well, I, I always thought at the far side of the quay, opposite the Germans' gate there, there was a, seemed to be a graveyard. But I never... You could see the shapes of the graves, like, you know, in, in the ground, like, you know. Outside the wall. Aren't outside the wall at one stage, yeah. There's no church there in Bingham? 
Billy might have a bit of history on that. Would you, Billy? This is supposed to be one of the first two churches in Wexford, the church over here. Mm. Okay, are we happy with that? Yeah. Thank you very much. Can I ask about the, the painting or the picture? Oh yes, the mural, yeah. yeah. John, John done that. <laughs> oh, What's her name? Elizabeth. <laughs> She's a fine lady, isn't she? Hopefully she'll be restored again, huh? To take her back and water it. That's great news, yeah? That's great news. If you open water, you'll see it. Was it part of Waterford Walls, Sean, was it? Hmm? Who, who did it? Like, do you know who did the painting on the ship? No, Anne Dillon and Fedder, to be a cousin of mine, and friends of hers did it. Right. I don't know who they were. Anne will tell you where I'm going. It's known as Deep Low. Yeah, like Okay, we'll do a wind up on it then. Listen, thanks, Sean, very, very much. That's an absolutely excellent talk. And Matt, too, shall be here and giving us the history of the buildings. Thanks very, very much. We'll Thank you.